Hi Anthony, it's um, Morris of course. I'm about to show you a few things on Pico that you asked me today. I'm just going to open up Pico. I'm at home actually and um, drink, drinking my green tea again. Obviously it's asked me for a um, device that I don't have so I'm going to push push yes because what that'll do is it'll open up my um, channels up here. I find if I don't push yes I don't have these channels open and then I can't show you what I want to show you. Okay, let's just um, but say we want to do a secondary waveform like I did on that uh, case study that you read. If I go to here, automotive, which you already probably know about, if I go to ignition, if I go to, this was a coil over plug system, then I go down to secondary, if I hit onto there, okay, we'll wait. Okay, this is going to give me, obviously, this hookup. They're using a probe here. I very rarely use a probe. If I have to, I will. But what I did on the um, Kia Carnival, I pulled the plug out. And you know those uh, secondary leads that come in the kit, which, well, I've got in my kit. Maybe you don't. But I use a secondary lead and hookup, and I get a much better waveform that way, in my opinion. So we'll leave this. We'll close this. Okay, we've got a sample of um, Pico here. We can see here, we've got the settings here. It's set to one millisecond per division. That's a setting I always use when I do a secondary waveform, mainly because we know that the um, spark timing has to be somewhere around uh, anything from th uh, 1.3 up to maybe just over two milliseconds of duration of spark at idle. This one here would be that line there is one millisecond because we know we're set here at one millisecond per division. So as we, um, there's a time base, we have one millisecond and then we have nearly probably, that's probably just over uh, 1.5 milliseconds. So we can get our cursors as you know. We'll drag them over and have a look what it is. And this one here. So yeah, like I said, well, it's actually nearly 1.6 milliseconds, but you can see what I'm saying. It's so easy to see then. You don't need the um, cursors to see if the time, not the timing, if the spark duration is not long enough. When you're looking at secondary waveform and primary waveform, it's always your duration. It's the most important thing to look at because if you have a shorter duration than what you should have, your spark's not burning long enough and you can't get full combustion burning and uh, there's an issue and I always look for the length of um, the burn time. That's the most important thing. The next most important thing is at this point is very critical is where the um, spark starts to jump across the spark plug. We look at this point of where it leaves the high KV demand on the um, upward um, spike that we get when the coil collapses from the primary and then it induces the secondary and we get this um, time that starts to come across the plug. Sometimes if it's the plug's carbon up or the plug lead, if it is a coil, a plug lead type or a um, anything that causes a resistance in the secondary can affect where this takes off. Um, if it's up, if it builds right up, uh, we've got a high, it tells us there's a high resistance somewhere. Even the combustion can have a high resistance if, you know, the fuel's wrong, um, a lot of carbon. So, yeah, we, we look at that line for diagnostic purposes um, where it comes off. Because this is um, using the probe uh, instead of being directly off the secondary cable, if it, you know, like when I did the Kia, I used the secondary cable where I pulled the coil out and put the cable in. Uh, and I got a much better picture, picture of um, the resistance along here. Um, the, the, when you do use the probe, you'll always get the right length of time because you can see that. But sometimes it does um, scale down, I guess, uh, and makes it look like there's less resistance than really is across there. So that's a trap you can just be careful of. Just incidentally, um, this from here, where this ringing is, this ringing is um, where the secondary is discharged and uh, the primary is turned back on. As the primary is turned on, you get this bit of a ringing because of the, um, I suppose, the leftover voltage going back into the primary coil from the secondary. But this is where the coil turns on and all along here is our dwell. And then it stops here 
and once it stops there it's because it's reached its time now where the um, primary has been cut off now it's reached saturation and the primary has been cut off and when it's cut off obviously that induced voltage goes into the secondary and it has this intensive high voltage spike up here which is the induction of um, the primary collapsing into the secondary then it comes back down and then once it gets down to somewhere normally it's between I think uh, one and a half to maybe even up to 3 kV uh, and then it cuts across it cuts across and we have our duration of the spark from the spark in the combustion through the spark plug and at the end of that spark it's weak and it's just ringing here it's just ringing the spark as it drains straight out and the, and the combustion's finishing and then we have have our cycle starting all over again our kV line is important to look at as well uh, if we have a weak coil we're not going to build up the voltage in that coil and we'll see it in this um, line here so the best way to test the kV line is to give the car a wide open throttle first and at wide open throttle as you're doing that you're going to have a high demand on that spark because of the turbulence and the combustion it's going to need more spark to um, to force that um, spark going across the spark plug and therefore it's going to build up much higher and if we see a nice steady height up to maybe up to 10,000 kV or a bit more obviously this is going to not show quite that much being used using the um, probe on this one so it doesn't show quite as high but if you had the um, high voltage um, lead like I do when I do my tests um, on that Kia where I use the external lead to um, put in between the plug and the coil I was able then to um, hook up straight on that lead and therefore I can see a much better KV line um, and yeah if you accelerate hard and it stays down low uh, and particularly if others um, when you got multiple coils others are showing much higher that pinpoints a problem in that area so keep that in mind too um, I'm going to show you, I'll open up um, this Kia one now, I've got that saved here in my computer, just bear with me ok Kia, we'll do the bad one, number 3, ok we'll open that one up ok I've got the cursors on here, we might get rid of these cursors, we don't really need them if we can see here, like this is on a different scale now, minus 3 to 10 kV right 10,000 kilovolts look we're already hitting 10,000 kilovolts so I probably could be on maybe a 15,000 kilovolt scale but that, that's pretty normal to have a high kV like that and if we look here the resistance on this is much more realistic because it's up a, a fair bit more than what the other one was if I right click my cursor there it's um, 1.875 kV which is almost um, you might as well say 2 kV I can also bring my cursor down to see the same effect uh, yeah same thing there that's uh, 1.855 kV so that's pretty normal but you know even up to there can be acceptable in some cases over that point there is way too high and you've got high resistance for some specific reason which needs to be investigated but this this is not my problem my problem is this timing for the um, burn time if that there to there is 1 kV, not 1 kV, sorry, is uh, 1 millisecond, that means this is sh shorter than 1 millisecond, it's obvious, which it is, and we already know that, 0.7 of a millisecond or thereabouts. So we've got a burn problem here. Um, if you want to compare that with the good cylinder, uh, I'll just get the good cylinder, just one minute. So this is cylinder number one, same engine, idling conditions, uh, what a difference the uh, spark time, we can see it's much uh, more closer to what we'd expect, the duration would be by the looks of that, uh, maybe 1.4 milliseconds guessing, but let's have a look, remember the other one was under you know, maybe 0 0.7 a millisecond, uh, 1.3 and a half, so I think 1.3 is probably borderline but it's um, but it's still acceptable and a big improvement to the other one even this I'll just do a left click here on the mouse uh, look at this um, we've got uh, 1.4 kilovolts yeah so you know that's that's good uh, cave oh, actually this is set differently this is on um, see how we can change the settings I just work it out as I go I guess and so this one's got 20 kV uh, max see so 20 kV up there on the scale and obviously this sets the scale and this is um, 
you know, just over 12.5, which is 12,500 volts um, there. And if I was to rev that up, as I said before, in a wide open throttle snap, we'd see that jump up a bit more and, and come down. Uh, there's a problem with that coil. You'd never get 12.5 kV or um, certainly if you revved it up, well, it, yeah, it'd be a lot lower. Uh, it's a telltale sign for coils going if that KV's down a little bit. So, yeah, you just play with the settings and use the automotive setting um, if you're not sure. In fact, I use it still even today, but most of the time I work it out. But uh, so, for example, if I was to do a fuel pump, and I know how to set a fuel pump up, but even when I was learning, I did this a lot just until I got used to it. Uh, to test the fuel pump, we just, I'll close this, we just get the... Um, pattern that it should look like. It varies a little bit on fuel pumps, um, one to another, but I see the amperage is roughly between four and six um, amps. Sometimes uh, if I get very high amps on here, it's an indication of a fuel blockage, uh, fuel filter blocked or something. It's a good telltale. Um, look at the um, settings up here, how the factory, not the factory, how Pico have set it up. Generally speaking, that's how I would probably leave it at that. Um, but you know, you can change it. Um, I'll show you something really neat. Actually, I did uh, last week. I had a diesel high ace one uh, KZ uh, import car. It was knocking its head off. Um, it had a few problems. Now um, I've got to open this file. Um, where are we? High ace. Here we go. I'll get a picture of it when it was running okay, because there's times it ran okay and there's times it didn't. It also had a code uh, 14 in this. Code 14 is to do with the um, timing of the injection um, timing, and if it's out more than uh, seven degrees to the target, uh, the computer thinks it should be. It will throw this code 14. But if we look at this, it's. Uh, I happen to know it's pretty good timed at the moment. This first screen pattern here is the crank ang angle sensor and as you can see it's there's a two volt scale there which I've got it set to where are we green I oh, know I've got it set to 0.5 but I think I've moved this up and that's why you can't see if I move this down let's have a look yeah you can see I it'll go down to five volts there's your five volts but to make everything fit in I'll set the pattern so that they work for me but uh, so you, I've set that to five volts. This one here is the engine re revolution sensor, and I've set that one to 10 volt scale. Uh, this one here is up to 30 volts, and that one there is for your timing control valve and the injector pump. So I've set that to a 50 volt scale. As you can see, you can change it. You probably already know that anyhow. Down here, I use my low amp probe. I did this on the spill control valve and the spill control valve controls when the injection happens and I wanted to see the, the timing of the injection and when I, I happen to know that when the uh, current is up there when the current's flowing or the voltage is in the um, uh, it's got the uh, spill valve on the injectors turned off as soon as the uh, current is dropped off the valve closes in the spill valve and we now have um, injection happening and then it stops um, so this is the control the timing control it actually the timing control actually turns um, in the injector pump to change the position of the um, crank revolu not crank uh, the engine revolution sensor so it's timed slightly different but um, but I'm happy with the way it's running at the moment and I, I'm looking at this pattern as a good pattern I see one two three maybe a little bit three and a bit these are about 11 degrees of crank revolution each each one of these um, uh, waveforms now if I go and have a look at the one where the engine started knocking because one minute it'll be fine the next minute it'll be knocking its head off you when it knocks you're obviously getting um, uh, advanced timing for it to knock the way it was and not com not running properly now open uh, where are we uh, where are we knocking here we go knocking it idle by the way same all the same settings of course what a difference I don't know whether I sh yeah we did count these this is the engine revolution sensor the crank sensor one two three three and a bit is where it was before now look one two and a half like two of those is 22 degrees or a bit more and so it's probably nearly 25 degrees uh, advanced at the moment to what it was a minute ago even this cutoff valve was more or less in line with this um, spill valve um, when the spill valve um, was turning the injector off it was nearly in line there now it's over there a little bit it's obvious the timing's out. Uh, my staff end up pulling the front cover for this engine 
uh, the timing, uh, uh, we looked at the timing, but we found that the timing uh, hydraulic tensioner had actually collapsed and it was allowing the timing to alter because the timing belt was coming in and out as the tensioner gave away gave way. So um, we, I don't think, we haven't put the timing belt on yet, but probably next week we'll put a new timing belt with a new tensioner on it. But I'm nearly 100% sure from my evidence I've got that this will fix this. And uh, also it was throwing a code 14. It's interesting, the uh, factory manual will tell you all these things for a code 14 would could happen, but it doesn't tell you, um, you know, anything like a timing issue, a mechanical issue. In this case, it was a mechanical issue. Um, but yeah, the, the lab scope, there's just no end of um, what we can can see, you know, and this is such a good evidence. I want to do a story on this, by the way. Uh, I think it's worth doing a story. Okay, Anthony, I've whet your appetite tonight, I hope. I hope I haven't bored you, or I hope I haven't confused you. I will do a better video, um, a, a much more professional one one day, but uh, for now that might help you. Okay, I'll just turn this off.